Okay, so the project at hand right now is this trailer. Um, I've had it for about a year, um, and there's some things that I've fixed to it, some things that still need fixing. I've added a spare tire and other random stuff. Um, the main thing that I've added to it is actually this extra length of the gate. The gate wasn't long enough, so I'd be pulling the mower up there and I'd bottom out right on that lip. So I added this onto here. Um, you got that bolt there. It actually swings all the way up. Well, something, I don't even know what it was. Well, actually I do. I took a truck bed to the scrap yard and it pushed this whole thing back. So now my, they don't line up very well. So I have to beat them down with a hammer. Um, and this thing adds just a ton of weight to the back. Um, so if I come all the way up here, if you can see, I'm able to lift up this the front of this, meaning that there's too much weight in the back. So when it's empty, I don't really have the tongue weight that I should. Um, also, the there's pieces of angle iron going across here that these deck boards sit on. Those are actually bowed down, so I need to take all these deck boards up and fix that. So also, I'm, I got some new lights. Those are going to go on to it, but the main thing is going to be taking this off. I'm just going to use ramps for whenever I need to use it. Ramps will just be mounted somewhere on the side. I have some aluminum ones, and I have this little groove right here that they can sit down into instead of making a whole separate rub rail. So then these can come off, and I might paint it. haven't decided. It just depends on how far I get into it, so... I'm going to go ahead and take that off and then take those, take these, the sideboards off and then the deck boards.
this piece here actually keeps them all in place. Um, you put all those boards in, and then you keep them at the end. But as you can see, I can show you here. Pretty twisted, so I'm gonna actually replace this this piece here. It's just a piece of angle iron. This here is a rat's nest. I don't know what they had going on with all these wires, but these are all for the electric brakes. They got wire nuts and I don't even know. I don't know what's going on here. I mean, the brakes all work, so it's hooked upright. It's just ugly looking.
Okay, so I went ahead and went all the way around the trailer. These used to be squared off here. Um, I cut these little ears out because my plan is to take some flat stock and cut it down to size and then weld it on the side here like this. Um, because then my my two inch LED lights will fit right into it. They'll be exposed here on the back side, but I'm really not on the back side here. The wires will be, but I'm really not too worried about it here. Um, because all the wires are going to be exposed over here where I have the tail light, I'll have a, a um, the top will be on it. I'll have it capped off because I'm just going to use some square tubing for that. Um, but back here on the clearance lights that are going to be back here, those are not going to be open on the back side just in case it's low and the back side of this trailer scrapes the ground or something. I don't want them to be open. Um, I'll just cap one side of that square tubing or not cap either side and just have the wires coming out of that. Okay, so I got all five of those cut out. I got some three inch C channel. Um, originally, I was going to take some angle iron, or not angle iron, square tubing, and go up the middle with both of these and not replace these cross members, but I changed my mind on that. So what I'm going to do is these will end up being all cut out and then these will just be stuck up underneath there and welded to it. I only needed five. That one there, I'm going to keep that cross member just because it doesn't span very far and it's not bent. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five back here are all going to be cut out and I will just weld them up underneath. So the plan is to cut them all out first and then I will stick them up underneath there I'll weld them here with the trailer sitting this way. And then the plan is to flip the trailer over so I can get my underneath welds. So right now I'm going to take and cut out the piece of C-channel from back here for my three marker lights. Um, I'm also going to be cutting out my pieces for my tail lights here. These ones are already made. And then I'm also going to cut out the pieces for the front marker light and then I will get them welded up. Okay, so the plan for this is I am actually going to take these two pieces of channel, set them on their sides, and add some angle iron just on the tops and bottoms to make the box wide enough to get my bite on there. Get this one here. This is going to be my identification markers in the back. You have the three lights. Then this here is going to go on the front corners, welded to the bottom, and then I'm going to have my one ID marker towards the front. Okay, so this is what I got going on. I have the two pieces of C-channel here. I got a little piece of flat stock that I cut out of just a random piece that was sitting around. Um, this is an inch and a half wide. So I'm going to kind of do a couple tack welds through here, take these magnets off, and then I should be able to full weld it. This is only like my third welding project, so go easy on the welds here. They're gonna look not great, we'll say. Okay, so here's what they look like before I grind them down. Um, they don't look the best, but they look a lot better than the first project I did. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grind these down because I think it'll look better. Um, making it look like a full box instead of me just kind of patch working this thing together. Okay, I think this is the best weld that I've done so far. Um, I realized that I was going a little bit too fast on the other side, so I was getting a little bit of bubble gum. Um, and it wasn't penetrating evenly. I'd have penetration here, 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 but not in between those points. Um, over here was my tack weld. I went a little bit too much. I held it in the same place for too long. 
but yeah, they're, it's definitely getting a little bit better. Um, I'm still going to grind all these down just because I think it'll look better be, to make it look like one big box, but the welds are definitely getting better. Okay, well these were the last welds on the last box. I haven't ground them down yet. Um, so in an earlier clip I talked about how the rods kept sticking to it, and after doing some research I found out that it's because the voltage isn't high enough. So I've been incrementally increasing it. I started at 90 and it seems like 130 is the best area for it. Um, these are eighth inch rods. Um, and the recommended for mild steel is 90 is what it says. So that's why I started it there. Um, this here is 3 sixteenths. Both of these are 3 sixteenths. So it's not too, too bad. Well, I think that flat stock is eight, eighth inch, but so I'm gonna go ahead and grind these down. Of course, these ones are the better ones. I wish I didn't have to grind them down because they don't look too, too bad on this side at least, but that first one is pretty bad. And on this side, it's not terrible either. That's gonna hold. Um, of course, I'm gonna flip the trailer and I'm gonna be able to do some some more welds on the ends. <coughs> <coughs> but I'm really happy that those those are gonna hold. At least I know that it'll hold. It, but I'm still gonna do some extra once it's flipped over. So I ended up doing four passes on either side there. That got it good enough. The only thing I still need to do is take up the old piece I just ended up cutting it straight off so now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to cut this back one off and um, weld this piece of C channel under it it's gonna be the next easiest one because the other ones I have to fish the wires out of so I'm gonna go ahead and weld this one and then I will take those wires out cut those ones out put those C channels in and then flip it so I will be back after I flip it because the rest of these are pretty much going to be the same as this one, except I won't have to do as many passes because there's not going to be as big of a gap. So this one, the rest of these will be pretty easy. That's the right size. Wanted to update you on a quick adjustment that I did. Um, when I got the trailer flipped over, I actually 
went ahead and flipped all those rails on edge, the ones that I welded in. I think I only had this one and that front one welded in when I flipped it. So I flipped those around sideways like this. I think it'll be stronger. The only one I didn't was the center one um, because I, w I cut it too short to get it in between the frame rails. But all of these here, you got them, especially these ones in the front and back of the shackles. Um, you got them welded there on the bottom all the way around. And when I flip it back over, I will get that little bit that's right there. But that's going to be on all of them. So right now I'm going to install those pieces that I just cut out. One on the, each front corner and then that bigger one here in the back. Okay, so I wanted to fill you in on everything that I've done. It's been a couple days. Um, today's the first day I'm actually able to work on it because it was actually snowing yesterday. Um, well, all the cross members, I welded them on either side here all the way down. Um, I also, you can see, put that main one up through there and that's all welded into all the cross members. So it's nice and solid. I also redid the jack. Um, I don't know if I showed you, but the round pieces actually on the square tubing broke off because there was too much forward pressure instead of the up and down pressure so it just snapped it so i took this whole piece off ground it down and re-welded it in i've also decided i'm not going to do the lights on the corner of the fenders um, they weren't there before i just don't think i need them and it's not worth my time because um, i don't plan to keep this trailer long term if i did i would have i would do that and I also cut down these um, boxes for the lights. I took quite a bit of it off just because I couldn't determine how I wanted to mount it. Originally, I was going to cut this whole piece off, whole end piece of angle iron, throw it on there. But there's so many welds on there, it'd just be too much of a pain. So, and I didn't want it to come all the way up because I need this hole in case I want to put that gate back on because this right here is for my gate assist. So what I can do is I can cut it, it'll get mounted down about here. This piece will get cut off. Um, the back side of the angle iron won't. I'll put a cap on it and I will still have access to this here. If I want to put that gate back on, all I have to do is I could put a plate out or weld something on there, um, like what was there before. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out, weld these things on, and that should be the last of the welding on this trailer. Unless I think of anything between now and the end.
Okay, so I got these boxes now welded on there. They look good enough um, in terms of the welds. They're not the best, but they'll be fine. That bottom's gonna be open because that's where all my wiring is gonna come out of. Top, I capped off. It just looks cleaner that way. You're never gonna see that opening unless you're underneath because you're gonna have the lights there. Um, I think that is it. We got them cut out pretty well to where if I still wanted to put that gate back on, I could put those things back on there or I can weld another plate that comes over to here and it'll be fine. So I got all that spray painted. I don't know if you're able to hear me very well or not because it's pretty windy. But all that spray painted now, I'll probably end up going back through and doing a second coat because it, it's not looking like it's drying um, as thick as I'd like. Originally I was going to repaint the whole trailer, but this trailer isn't worth the time to go through and repaint it. Because the plan is to only keep this trailer for about another two years. So I'm going to put a second coat on this area here um, maybe hit all these end pieces again then I will go ahead and wire the trailer brakes after the trailer brakes are done then I will wire the lights and it should be good to go 
currently I don't have a ramp on it, but I'm going to show you guys because the old ramp or the gate is over here, but I'm going to show you what I'm going to do instead. I'm going to use some Harbor Freight ramps. They only have a capacity of a thousand pounds total for both of them, but I'm going to put some two by tens in there. So then it'll be a little bit stronger for a mower and some other stuff. Okay, so I got it fully turned up to, it's not gonna show. I got it fully turned up to 10. The output's completely on because I got a squeeze clamp on the breakaway. And now we can go around. You can actually hear it. Hear it in that one. You can hear it in that one. You can hear this one. You can hear that one. I might have to adjust them because um, this 10 gauge wire is a little bit bigger than what I had on there before. I think I had a 12 on there. So I don't know if it's going to send more voltage causing me to have to adjust the drums. And I just want to show you kind of what I did here. Um, so I brought them both back. Well, I started back here and I went forward. I found it was easier that way. Um, here were all the wires converged. I had to put a red wire nut on there um, because I didn't have a crimp big enough to fit three 10 gauge wires and then presumably like a 12. I don't know what that is, but presumably it's gonna be like 12 or a 14. 
so I had to use the red wire nuts just on the front axles. These back ones, I was able to get away with the crimp. A couple times they came out, but I got enough electrical tape on them that they shouldn't come out anymore. I'm gonna fix that there. It's hanging down a little lower than what I'd like, so I might just take some electrical tape, wrap it around there. I got all the lights on, I did that all off camera. Um, I originally had it on camera, but then I messed up the wiring on it. Um, it didn't say, for these little two inch lights, it didn't say which one was hot and then which one was the ground. So I'm used to wiring a house, so I just assumed that the black was the hot and the red was the ground. Well, I was wrong, so I had to swap those around. But luckily I only had this one done and this one done, so it wasn't too difficult to go back through and change it. So what I am going to do now is I am going to just tie up any wires that are still kind of hanging down, make sure they're tidied up and they're not going to catch on anything. Then I'm going to start by putting this deck back on. I think I'm going to, I'll probably start with this outside board so that I can get the side boards on and then we'll go to the middle. I'm going to have to get a couple more because a couple of them broke when I brought them off as you saw, but these ones here are still good enough to throw on. There's a big crack in that, but I'm going to throw that one on the edge. And then what I'm going to do is I will sink some carriage bolts because before what they had is a piece of angle iron that kind of held it all in so it didn't bounce around but here there's a big surface I'm going to actually put some carriage bolts down through there I'll just have to watch when I get over into here um, probably this middle one won't have any back here I'll just have to move them up so I will do some carriage bolts along the back do them in this middle one with that big section again I just gotta watch for the wires and then up here the ones that touch this piece coming across um, I will put them into this one, but then the ones that don't, I'll just put a carriage bolt probably somewhere up in here. Okay, so all the deck boards that I have that are still good are on there. Um, I'll have to get another one. I don't even know what that span is, but I'm gonna try and get one board and rip it because most likely the gap here and the gap up there isn't the same. So I'll try and get one big board and rip it down the center. That'll save me a little bit on cost. But right now I'm going to put the sides back on, the front and the sides. I'm not going to record that. You guys already saw me take it off, so there's no way, there's no point in wasting your time because it's the exact same process, just backwards. Okay, I don't know how much of this you're going to be able to hear, but I got her all situated and good to go. Um, I had to rip these boards down, of course, because I got two by eights. So this one here is six inches at the bottom, six and a half up there, and then this one here, this full one, is just six and three quarter the whole way. I also went ahead and took the tires off and put a screw actually into this 
backer piece of the fender into the 2x12 that's on the other side because it's going to be too difficult to try and spot weld all these back together so it doesn't flap in the wind. So I figured that's going to be the easiest way to do it. Most likely these sides will stay on when I sell the thing anyway. So that is the end of this video. I will see everybody on the next project.